Hi, my name's Richard, and we're turning this abandoned U.S. Coast Guard lighthouse into the world's coolest ocean tree house. You want to see it? Let's go! And if you don't take a helicopter like me, there's always the boat. Come with me. Hey, Mitch, you ready to come up? I'll come down and get you. Let's get you out of that water. There's a lot of sharks down there today. This is your elevator right up here. Hang on and don't fall off. You'll probably be all right. Watch your step. It is a long, long ways down. Let's go on up to the top, all right? Welcome to the Frying Pan Tower, the world's coolest and most dangerous ocean treehouse in the world. But what makes this place so dangerous? Other than the barracuda and sharks that you were just in the water with, it's old and rusty and kind of falling apart. But that's because it's been through many hurricanes, of which I've been out here for three of them. And unless you want to swim 32 miles to shore, the only way off is by boat or helicopter, which makes it the perfect spot for a zombie apocalypse or a virus outbreak. But what is this place? Well, it's a lighthouse. Come on, let me show you. Welcome to the top of the tower. We're 126 feet off the water now where hundreds of ships have sunk over the years. That's why they call this the graveyard of the Atlantic. And this light helped them steer clear of the shallow waters. Before we go inside, let's go up top. Here we're 136 feet off the ocean, and if you look around, you still can't see the shore. You want to see the inside? Not many people have been on the inside of the frying pan tower. With over 6,000 square feet and these hallways all looking the same, it's really easy to get turned around. Richard, where the heck is the bathroom? You're right around the corner from it, right there. We have eight bedrooms, some big, some small, and two bathrooms. Plenty of room to house the Coast Guard guys that kept the light on since the 1960s. Now let's go into the main rec room and take a look around. This is the rec room. So the rec room is where we hang out with our friends after a long day of volunteering work. Maybe play a little bit more pool, maybe throw some darts. Now above us, there's no light at all other than the stars above. And to take advantage of that, we have these telescopes to get up on the helipad for where you can see the moon, the Milky Way, or occasionally a comet. So what's up with all the flags? Well, I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but we have really high winds out here on a regular basis. And when a flag gets absolutely destroyed by the hurricanes, for example, we replace it with a new one as often as we can. So how are you powering those radios? Well, you notice you don't hear anything. That's because they're using the solar to power the radios, the lights above, and our internet, like our live feed right here, or YouTube, or Netflix. And my favorite thing about the rec room is the fresh beer on tap. Come on with me to the kitchen. This is the kitchen. I know it looks good now, but we destroy this place on a regular basis. But if you're an avid fisherman, you can catch it, clean it, and cook it with one of our volunteer chefs. I'm not a chef. So what's the craziest thing you've ever cooked? Well, actually, it was something we didn't cook. We ordered Domino's Pizza, had it delivered by helicopter. Now that was a mighty fine pizza pie. You know how some people save their scraps for their dogs? Well, we don't have any dogs. But we do save our scraps for our friends with fins. Around here, the sharks get a little cranky if we don't feed them every day. Here we have two pools. Of course, the ocean below us, but it has those pesky sharks and barracudas. But we've been working on an alternative. Where are you, Mitch? Hey, right here, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> We're in one of three of the 15,000 gallon water tanks. It takes when the rain hits the deck, comes down two drains and 
fills these stainless steel pipes up, filling this whole facility full of water. But since we don't need three anymore, we're gonna take this one, make holes in the side so we can watch the sunset or the barracuda below. Let's go on to the next thing, come on. So what do you do if you need to get off the tower? Unless you're a professional high diver, that's a long ways down. Well, you could take a helicopter, although that's a rather expensive option. Or you could use our emergency escape hatch. Come on, let me show you. This is the escape room, come with me. In through the escape hatch leads down to the maintenance level. In and of itself, a dangerous place. Whoa, Mitch, watch your step there, buddy. There once was a lower level, but the hurricanes tore it off. But if you had to get out of the tower in an emergency, this would be the way to get down. Maybe dangerous, but at least you'd get off the tower. All right, we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Is it open to the public? Well, actually, no. And that's because we're focused 100% on the restoration. And if the restoration doesn't get done and we don't catch up on beating the rust, then that's not even a possibility. We've got a lot of volunteers that are helping us, and the more the awareness increases, the greater the chances that that could happen. Even if it did happen, it would still be the equivalent of a one-star hotel, but it would have a billion stars above it. I'm sure you're wondering what amenities a measly one-star hotel might have. Well, of course we have our turn-down pillow service, complete with chocolate and all. And we've got exemplary 24-hour room service. This is our spa. Hey, a little privacy, please. Oh, sorry about that. Where the Coast Guard guys would come in here and take care of the three S's, two of which are shower and shave. Hey, pass me the body butter. Oh, there you go. All right. A full-service salon to look your best. with the best bartenders who serve the finest drinks. Oh, looks good. And as far as recreation goes, we've got a lot. Like fitness classes, dance classes, yoga, and weightlifting. Huh. Damn. All with a view and the best instructors. Come on, it's uh, 20, not 10. Uh, we have the best links around where you can hit biodegradable golf balls into the world's biggest water hazard. Test your nerve with walking the slack line below. And we have the biggest swing around. Richard, why are you doing this? Well, some people would say I'm crazy, and they're probably right. But we wanted to build something that would last for generations, where people could come out and escape the chaos. A place where people can let go of their worries and learn about the ocean. Because out here, there's nothing but positive energy. The sun rises, the moon rises, and the storms. Being out here is special, and once we're done restoring it, we'll have one of the coolest ocean tree houses around.